need you to be honest with me. Honesty's I, never been my strong suit. I uh, I asked it's you not for, true at all. I asked you for a coffee. To stop and get me a coffee on your way over here, and I thought you were gonna get a coffee, and you walked in with a water. Did you have? Did you already have a nice coffee this morning? How did you know that? How did you know? Because you came in with a water. Yeah, I knew you were gonna oh, double up. Yeah, but this isn't a recycled cup. So I mean. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I got a nice coffee this morning. I drank about half of that that's in my fridge at home right now. Um, I didn't want it to give me a stomach ache. Yeah. So I just drank half of it. And uh, yeah, I picked up a water on the way here. Let me tell you, though, I'm so frustrated with Starbucks. And I know this uh, this too. conversation is so played. <laughs> specifically specifically yours, though. I, I mean, I order an unsweetened iced coffee. That's all you got. And then I ordered a water with lemon. And you would have thought that was the most complicated thing. Oh, yeah? I said, Trenta unsweet nice coffee and a Trenta water with lemon. And when she repeated it back to me, not one aspect of the order was correct. Oh, really? So we got a, a venti water with lemon and uh, uh, and then sweetened iced coffee. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> You're talking about the one here yes. where I live. Uh, and... I ordered a water with lemon, and she says, oh, well, we don't have lemon. What? Haven't we been over this? Why doesn't Starbucks have lemon? It was one thing, for those of you who don't know, there was a previous story on a previous episode of Sight and Sound. I tried to order a Coke at Starbucks. Found out they it's didn't mistake have, number one. Found out they didn't have fountain drinks, which I, I get it, but... They, could, they can still have fountain drinks. But right. Actually, no, I was more peeved at the fact that she made me feel like an idiot, even though they could have a fridge of like, like, why is that so hard to believe that Starbucks might have a fridge of glass bottled Coke right. with some teas and stuff? So, I mean, I, anyway, she made me feel stupid. But to not have lemon when that is a staple for so many teas. Absolutely. Starbucks has tea. So she said. Hey, take it easy. Okay. She said, no, Relax. but. I found I found that a splash of lemonade in the water makes it taste slightly like lemon with water. She said that? Yeah. Or water with lemon. And I said, but I want water with lemon for the health benefits. Right. I don't want your sugary not, lemonade. Not for yeah. the taste of lemon. So I said, sure. I, I, I can't even taste it. I know it's right. there, but I can't even taste it. So I just got some water with some lemonade in it. And I'm like, that's not why I wanted water with lemon. I was telling you the story off air. Uh, last night, Kayla had a shop opening, grand opening party thing going on uh, for her, for her new tattoo shop, and which already has more followers than we do. Did you know the that tattoo shop on Instagram? Of course they do. My God, of course. What's going on in the tattoo world? People like tattoos. I know. Anyways, so they they had this uh, party, and I was in charge of getting the drinks, the beverages, no alcohol, just uh, sodas and whatnot. And I asked Kayla, I said, hey, should I get a box of LaCroix? And she kind of rolled her eyes and said, if you want to get LaCroix for yourself, that's fine. So I did. I went and got <laughs> two boxes, kept one for the house, a, a box of Pamplemousse, of sure, or of course, for sure. And uh, I got to the party like an hour and a half after it had started had some things to do. Showed up. There were only two LaCroix left. The LaCroix was a huge hit. In fact, we talked about how surprising it was all night. That's got to be the most Jay and Kayla story possible. Of course. Hey, can I bring LaCroix to your new tattoo shop? Of course. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know about both of you. <laughs> and it was a, it was a it was a massive massive hit. Um and that too. The yeah. fact that Anything you do, people like. Of course. So there you go. I mean, this story of is course. just everything, <laughs> you and Kayla. Yeah, and there was a uh, – I ended <laughs> up having to work, like, the front table. So what they did was they had uh, – it's called Black Rose Tattoo. And for the party, they were doing $80 Black Rose tattoos. Uh, there's three artists, and each of them drew up a, a rose yeah. of different styles, and people could come in and, and get tattooed. And – Within, I think within the first 20 minutes, they had like 30 names on the list. And there was wow. no way in hell they could do all of them. Yeah. So it was kind of first come, first serve. And I was sort of 
working the table like hey you know fill out this paperwork rain check voucher stuff, pretty much and uh <laughs> when they were done there was like a when they were deciding to like call it a day uh there was a room of people just sitting there waiting and i was the one that had to like, them tell away. them yeah so that was kind of funny and people were like coming up and asking me questions and you know how I feel about not wanting to oh, get no. into like uh, conversations that I just don't feel like getting into. Yeah. Eventually, I was just like, "So you date a girl that's a tattoo artist, but you don't have any tattoos?" <laughs> I had that conversation. Yeah, I had that conversation. <laughs> that's I, great. Had a conversation about soccer at one point with a guy, and uh, hey, very what nice kind guy. of what kind of vape is that, man? I think I was hiding that behind the desk. Anyways. Yeah, it just eventually I I just sort of had enough and I was like, eh, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing any more tattoos. Huh. So that was uh that was my Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, how was your Saturday? You were off work, got to hang out with Goodman. Yeah, I hung out with my friend Goodman. Um for those of you who don't well, no, pretty much none of you know Goodman except maybe Eric if he's listening to the show. Goodman's a type of character in my friend's group he's no matter what group of friends he is with he has the exact he is the same entity in that friends group and that entity happens to be the uh the butt of the joke the person that no one takes seriously so he's he's that guy in my uh friends group so uh we had lunch uh we went to go pick up some shoes i almost bought a kayak um but i couldn't you know transport my kayak uh via honda civic um, so I didn't make that purchase, <laughs> but I got a, I got a lake right by my house. I've been dreaming about kayaking on it. It's not really a lake though. It's kind of a, kind of a pond. No, it's a, it's big. It is a big pond. Can you see all the way across it? No. You can't see from end to end? No, you cannot. You can't walk around it? You can walk around it. Yeah. Any, any, l- because the edges of the lake are people's backyards. Yeah. I mean, there's any, docks. Any body of water you can walk around is a pond. No. 100%. Why don't you just come see it for yourself? I'm the one that lives over there. I know the difference between a pond and a lake, and I'm a little upset that you don't trust my, um, <laughs> my, uh, what word do I want? <laughs> Judgment on the uh, bodies of water. Let me know. Let me know on, in the face. I, I know Facebook that this group. is, I know that this is Trenta water with lemonade. Well, that's just because that's the definitive size of it. Yeah, but if I didn't know, you put the cups in front of me, someone might think it's a venti. Let me know on the Facebook group. Speaking of the Facebook group. I'll take a picture. I'll, I'll show you the Google Maps, and you all can decide if it's a lake or a pond. Speaking I'm of the, not going to do speaking that. Speaking of the Facebook group and speaking of your friends. I didn't finish uh, my Saturday. Oh, okay. But no, go ahead. It's, it's kind of an interrupting type story. You can do that. So uh, I, know, I know a lot of your friends have interacted with them. Got a bunch of characters. I do. We're all a, a bunch of mis- misfits. They're they're a part of our new Sight and Sound Facebook group. And There's a great. few of them, yeah. How the fuck aren't any of them participating? Every now and then you get Eric dropping in, giving his opinion on horror movies. Because so many of my friends are just boring. And, get involved. And they don't, they don't, this isn't really a judgment, but they don't consume as much as that's fine. everyone else in the group, I would say neither does My, somebody like like Brando. But I'm saying but what I'm super s- active. What I'm saying is, I don't even know why they're in the group to begin with. <laughs> I mean, I I love it and I <laughs> appreciate support it, us. but I I don't want them to be in the group and just be annoyed by all of it. You right. know what I mean? So it's like I don't. It, it, one of my friends that's in there, he's actually on vacation in the Bahamas, so he has a lot more. Uh, uh, fun things to do than be in the group, but I mean, like, yeah, Brando's Who's active. Who's that? Cody, Patrick. Is Cody in the group? No, but there's also so many people that I know personally that don't use Facebook. Right, I don't use Facebook. Exactly, but the difference is we use it to uh, interact socially with on Schmobile and everything else. Like we know the importance of Facebook, but someone like Eric Mulder has no business to be on Facebook in general. He's not going to participate in a group. So that's, I guess the, so that's the other problem. I know these people for the most part. I know I know Eric listens to music. He can talk about music with us. He can tell us who his favorite albums of the year are so we far. We were, oh my God. We, John uh, Mayer EP. Uh, all of my, all, the bandmates from my band, uh, we all had a 4th of July get together. 
And so we were there hanging out uh, with one of my bandmates. Fam- uh, we were at his family's house. I was looking forward to the vlog and, of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I could have made a vlog. Um, story of my life. Someone asked him, Eric, you been in any concerts down in Nashville? <laughs> and he, for one, the only for one, one for one, he had to think. <laughs> and two, he said the one that we didn't go to. And I don't remember who he saw. I was like, I don't know. Brad Paisley. I said, Eric, we came down there to see balance and composure with you. Oh yeah. Eric, you were the worst person to live in Nashville. It was a fantastic experience. He is too. the worst person to live in Nashville. Speaking of balancing composure, I I would get more use out of living in Nashville. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Speaking of balancing composure, I didn't finish my Saturday. We're going to we're going to see him. We're going to see him in less than a month. I am so excited. Oh yeah, that's right. I was getting it confused with the Foo Fighters show. I was like, Jay, that's in October. That's gonna be uh, that balance show. That's gonna be my birthday thing i think and oh that means i have to go i don't think anybody's if you don't go i'm probably going by myself because kayla's not going either really yeah she uh found out a little too late so oh so my saturday um let's get into snowfall my uh, this is uh we, we talked about your uh yours and kayla's uh definitive story of your lives mine was uh, hanging out with Goodman. We went to lunch, bought some shoes, and I've got a new obsession. He told me about a You know that guy Johnny's son on Twitter? Nope. All right. I'm not even going to go into it then. You just ruined an entire Sorry. Bit. You're supposed to know everything. I don't know shit about Twitter. I, uh, I've got a new obsession. It's uh, that reality. Well, it's not really a reality show. It's a game show on NBC called The Wall. Have you seen that? Nope. Jay, you're supposed to know everything. I don't know shit about NBC. It's a game show hosted by Chris Hardwick, produced by LeBron James. Well, no wonder I don't watch it. It's essentially uh, Plinko. It's like extreme cocaine Plinko. Oh, and yeah? uh, it's so much fun to watch. Um, this is the year I'm going to get into game shows. It's it's really fun. I, I like game shows. I don't really watch them, but I'm, I was a huge fan of Family Feud. Pretty good at Jeopardy. Really? Pretty good. I'm not, I'm not good at Jeopardy. I love Price is Right when I get to watch it. I love Family Feud. Uh, the Wall has been a lot of fun. I've been watching it on, watching it on Hulu. There's like five episodes that are up right now for uh, season two. But yeah, basically you just have two people and it's trivia. And depending on how many answers you get, you get that many balls. But there's a lot more to it than that. It's not that easy. Um, but it's, it's really, really entertaining. And... Uh, the questions are so easy. The, the whole point behind it, though, is like like t- today's episode that I watched was a father and daughter. This guy w- worked seven days a week for like 37 years to put his two girls uh, through medical school. Do they do this, the whole thing where they give you the whole fucking backstory of somebody before they play? Yeah. God, just play the game. No. I don't care th- about that. What? No. That's stupid. What you just said is dumb. You want to be invested. You want to have a reason to get behind them you, so, so you know that they have this money. You know what the most famous game show of all time is? Who wants to be a millionaire? You know what they didn't do? Any of that shit. You just you answered some questions they, in the audience. They interview the person, and they show the person that's with them in the audience on that show, and they do it the, the, the exact same thing on the wall. I think you're forgetting an aspect of who wants to be a millionaire. I don't remember that. There's oh, always a family member that they sit up there and the Regis or Meredith would ask, talk to them about the yeah. person in the hot seat. And then when they come back from commercial, they'd ask them another question about their lives. It happened. Yeah, I, but they, you're forgetting But that. they didn't show, they didn't have like a whole piece cut together about one of those people. You know how they do that sometimes when they're like, let's, let's meet our next contestant. Oh Rick. my goodness. A, th- a three minute piece on someone's life. I know. Life. I don't want all that. Just let me get to my point. Play the game. God. The whole point, I'm trying to hit something here, and you're not letting me. So Just play the game. <laughs> so No, that's not fun. Okay. They they were out there, and this basically they were there to win money to make up this, this student loan debt that they accrued was six figures. Sure. And that was one of the reasons uh, why they wanted to get there and make some money. The whole point, I've watched three episodes, four episodes of the show. These people are the best 
people on earth. They're all saints. One guy worked for a cable company and he happened to save someone across the street that was in a burning building. Like they get the best people on earth. So I could never be on the show, even though the trivia questions are so easy. Oh, Oh my God. I knock it out of the park. If I was a good person and I knew other good people, I could maybe team up with someone and get on this show. Meet, I could check off so many boxes. Meet Chris Hardwick, accomplish a get-rich-quick scheme, uh, take sight and sound to the next level, but I'd have to save a man in a burning building to do it, and I just don't think I can do it. Yeah, putting putting your needs before the, before another's is not, uh, not necessarily a strong suit. I just don't see it happening. It's been an interesting week. <laughs> How do we how do we get out of this? How do we get into TV? Let's talk about TV. All right, let's talk about TV. Look, I just I finished uh I finished the premiere, the pilot of Snowfall. And look, if you're recent to Sight and Sound, I just need you guys to know how we feel about FX. FX <laughs> is fucking fire. Is the best network on television. There's I don't even think it's there's an argument against that they just just a new show coming out in general on fx regardless of what it is warrants me at least paying attention to it yeah it's tv or yeah it's cables hbo absolutely and uh i also have a have a bone to pick i've realized since we've started this uh well we, we didn't start it, this sight and sound facebook group that there's a lot of people in the group that aren't paying much attention to television or and not, not I'm not like saying anything against and, those people. And we crowned television with the pop culture crown last week. Absolutely. We, people were giving us their top fives of the year so far. And a lot of people haven't been watching some of the shows that we've been talking about. Ross Cassidy just posted. He's watching master of none, which I finished last week. Absolutely. That's good. And um, look, we talk a lot in, in, when we talk about movies, about original films you know a lot of stuff is ip tentpole movies and and people really champion those uh original original films that come out they want more of that one of the reasons that i think we don't get as many good ones is because a lot of original properties are coming out on television and they're great and this is a show that uh that is relatively original i mean it's a it's a story that i think people Maybe not necessarily might not be familiar with, but it's a it's it's a story set in uh, in California. It has drugs involved. And, Hell yes! And uh, look, let's just talk about the trailers real quick, leading into this thing. What what piqued your interest about this show in general? One word, Jay. California. Oh, really? You like that? Um, <laughs> actually, yeah, pretty much California, <laughs> and it's something that I'm interested in. Um. I, I didn't realize I was interested in it until I saw Straight Out of Compton. Okay, but it was sort of or in Dope, Dope and Straight Out of Compton. Those really piqued my interest, and I uh, realized that I'm fascinated with drugs. I love seeing California, <laughs> and I, I love exploring that kind of history because the whole tagline is how crack began. Right, and I don't know how that happened. Like I, I'm totally oblivious to it. But and this is something that's kind of. Um, Are you familiar with Cocaine Cowboys? The stuff going on in in Miami no. back in the '80s. So that's a story, just in general, that's been told a lot. There's I forget the guy's name. He's been on Rogan. He made a documentary called Cocaine Cowboys, and the cocaine culture of the '80s was such a, a very very big thing. There's a whole other aspect to this, you know, the crack movement. I guess you call it a movement, epidemic. However, sure. I don't know, whatever you want to say. There's just this whole other side and element that I think has really come up recently. I think people exploring that side of things. Uh, if you watch the uh, OJ Made in America, uh, ESPN 30 for 30, they talked about that a-, a lot. Not only was that a documentary about OJ Simpson, but it also framed up uh, sort of the culture at the time and how right. we got to that point, especially out in California. Um but yeah, it's just it is a fascinating story. Going into this, John Singleton. Yeah. 
What's your experience with this man? I didn't realize how, just how many movies I've seen and uh, I've enjoyed from John Singleton. Um, I don't know a whole lot about him. Okay. I've seen several of... I'll have to look up the IMDb while we're I've talking. I've got it right now. Oh, okay. So uh, my on my list of uh, experience, on my resume for John Singleton to impress him, his movies I've seen, Boys in the Hood. No. Amazing. Oh, I'm saying no. I never saw it. I thought we were doing that. Poetic Justice. Never seen it. Incredible. Higher Learning. Never seen it. Can't remember it, but I've seen it. Shaft. Never saw it. Never saw it. Baby Boy with Tyrese. Never saw it. Are you serious? Never heard of it. One of my favorite. You never heard of Baby Boy? Nope. One of my favorite lines in Baby Boy. Let me smell your dick. It's a great line. Um, Too Fast, Too Furious. (laughs) How do you feel about that? I I enjoyed it at the time. Really? I owned the blue or the DVD when I was thirteen, but I don't care about. I think I turned it off. I don't. I don't. It's nothing. Okay, here's one. Four Brothers. It was good. Underrated. It was good. Yeah. Fun movie. Definitely. Really, really fun movie. But look, uh, John Singleton coming to TV. I think he worked on Empire a little bit as well. Let's just get into this, man. Uh, Did you watch? Did you watch Thirteenth? I didn't. Man, I, I, it's not true. I watched about thirty minutes of it while I was falling that, asleep one night. That was something else that sort of piqued my interest, and I think that there's so much that this show can explore. Um, but basically, the part of the documentary is talking about basically how Reagan uh, sort of framed this in a way, and the main character Franklin talks about how the system is rigged. But essentially, it's just how, how there's the whole "say no to drugs" movement that Nancy Reagan started, and all of that. There was so much the war on drugs brought on so much more criminalization right. and that whole idea. So that was something that I learned. I've been learning in the process of learning and kind of understanding. Yeah, it's been um, it's been talked about, uh, especially with that documentary, that the the war on drugs, the cocaine movement, the crack movement as well. It was just to put black people in jail. That's right. It was yeah. sort of uh, framed together, just like you said, uh, for to institutionalize. Right. Uh, black culture in America. So this is, I don't know why, but this is something that I've been kind of fascinated in learning about. So that was something that I was really kind of uh, looking for in this show. Uh, But again, going back to what you said at the beginning, the only thing, the only reason why I was like, Jay, we got to watch Snowfall. It's because it was a new, new show on FX. Yeah. And then the tagline, that's literally all that I needed. I didn't know who was in it. Um, yeah, I knew nothing except that. So, uh, sort of. So, my reaction. How did you watch this, by the way? So, because we, you don't have cable. How yeah, did you watch this for the people that might need to watch it? I I was using Sling for a long time, and I actually canceled my Sling because there wasn't any shows on right now. I was trying to you know save some money, and <laughs> I'd forgotten that FX doesn't really distribute their TV shows, um, which is kind of smart because they actually have the. They they have the uh, shows that make me want to go out and get things like Sling. But I actually went on iTunes, and I think the pilot was free. I don't know if I bought it or not, but, um, yeah, I watched it on iTunes. Um, I went to the FX Now app, and it was a dumb, like, five-minute preview. So I knew uh, it was pointless, but the, the pilot's free on Vudu right now because Vudu always puts up free pilots. So that's how I watched it, if anyone is uh, – Curious about this show. Um, I don't want this show to fall under the radar for people. I think a lot of people might not know about this show. And I talked last year when we watched Night Of that that was my favorite pilot of the year. It was also one of the best pilots that I've ever seen in television. I was so captivated by that. I mean, it was like watching a movie. This is the best pilot I've ever... Or, I'm sorry. This is the best pilot I've seen since Night Of. What? 100%. Are you serious? This is... This... If the rest of the season delivers on what this episode has promised, I think this could take number one. I'm shocked. This episode... What floored me. I mean... It, let, me let me just start off with the first thing. Wow. I have no idea who these two directors are. Uh, one of them uh, one of them is a Belgian director. The other guy, I don't know where he's from. Maybe he's from Belgium too. Never really worked on anything that I've seen. 
the direction, the cinematography in this television show is something that I, it, it hits so many cues. Things that I've seen in this were Dennis Villan, Villanueva. <laughs> At parts, I thought I was watching fucking Sicario. It's just some of the way uh, the shots were framed up. There was there was a ton of of uh, of long sh- what are those I, called uh, of uh, just a continuous yeah, shot. continuous shots throughout houses in in Compton. The, the opening shot was great, incredible, um, incredible. There were points where I thought I was watching J J Abrams with all the fucking lens flares going on, dude. This the the color palette of this thing was gorgeous Mm -hmm. i was like what is this is this guardians of the galaxy 2 trailers because i haven't seen the actual movie this thing was stunning i'm shocked by how much you love this i was captivated the 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 story was like nothing i'd i mean there there are cues from things that you've seen before in films 100 percent. but the way that the story was told jumping around i mean there are there are uh periods in the episode where you're jumping from place to place and you have no idea yeah like how different aspects of the episode are connected to each other right but in in a lot of shows that's very jarring and you have no idea how to put together the narrative but i just i was on the edge of my seat man wow i uh here's what i'll say i think it's really good Uh, i do want to watch i want to continue the show um, I think my issues are with the three main storylines. We have the f- the primary one that involves Franklin, uh, which I like very much. And he's definitely the one that holds the show together. Uh, we have one great storyline. We have a storyline that I don't even know if I understand, which is just basically how one of the... Uh, uh, there's someone that's involved with drugs who's now working for... Uh, what is, is it the FBI yeah. or CIA? They're working together at CIA. Yeah. CIA, and I don't even understand that storyline. And that I think that might be because I'm ignorant to how uh, things went down. I don't think they've told. Time. I don't think they've told you enough about it to okay. really. Yeah. So maybe it's so it's something that we're all I think it's missing. purposeful. Yeah. So okay, I don't know a whole lot about that aspect at all. So I'm curious, but there was a slight disconnect. And then this third with uh, this Latino wrestler who is uh, getting involved with, I guess, a drug runner of some kind or a gangster. Uh, that one just didn't interest me at all. Really? I didn't find it interesting or captivating. I don't even know if that guy said a single word, that main character. Um, Oso, I think, is his wrestler's name. But that that guy, that whole storyline, and some of the CIA stuff that was going on. I, I just watched Sicario, like, a couple of weeks ago. Not a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago for the first time. Yeah. It reminded me so much of that movie. And uh, no spoilers, obviously, but there's a character in Sicario who you follow uh, throughout the movie in bits and pieces, and you have no idea how he's t- tied into things at right. all. Right. And it reminded me so much of that, man. Like, it was it was bizarre to me. The The show is very stylized. This, this TV show is what I thought Atlanta might have been. <laughs> what? Yeah, just because I, I mean... I, we didn't know what Atlanta was going to be going into it. I mean, it could have been... There were times when that show... I mean, the show starts out with somebody getting shot. It could have easily been a drama. You, right. You never know. Uh, there are points in it where it really reminded me of Dope, just with sort of the adolescent sort of... And just the story in general being in, in California. You, you said earlier, Imperial Dreams, that shit yeah, John absolutely. Boyega movie on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, this is the better version of that. <laughs> but it's just fascinating. Uh it also reminds me, obviously, of uh, of of Breaking Bad, just because it does have you know the sort of drug uh, comeuppance, right. so to speak. But it really does sort of get. I mean, you get right into it. It doesn't really mess around. There, there were definitely some like uh, I found myself um, kind of being taken by some of the gut wrenching moments. Uh, the ones that there were two that we specifically watched that involved Franklin. Since I've been over here. Um, that were really kind of, really kind of hit you in a way, and I think that adolescent aspect is something that that's why I like the Franklin one so much, um, is because he's kind of the fish out of water, um, to be cliche, but uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm freaking out over the show as much as you are, but I definitely did enjoy it, and I would I want to be talking about this for weeks to come. I'm hoping that it gets 
uh, bigger and better. I want to see uh, the wrestler storyline improve. I want to know more about the whole CIA operation because that's sort of like that is the educational aspect right. that I I should be intrigued by when it comes to eighties. Uh, how crack? I mean, that's the show. How crack began. Um, so that's the part that I'm really looking forward to knowing more about. Uh, I definitely did think it was well acted, and I did think it was beautiful. Um, but I, I wouldn't. I think you enjoyed it a lot more than I did. Absolutely, for sure. Absolutely. But, I'm but yeah, it's it's a solid it. watch. It's a solid watch. Well, I think too, just to sort of wrap wrap it up, the show the show hits so many cues that I look for in in good media in general. It it was gorgeous. It was very artistically presented. The acting was great, and the storyline was captivating. And not to mention, too, uh, that you're getting a lot of different things. It can be sort of not sort of. It can, it can be a cop drama. It can yeah. be a coming of age in the you know in, in a, of a kid growing up in Compton. It can be anything at once, really. And it's I'm I'm fascinated by the world it builds. Uh, it's just great, man. I thought it was fantastic. I can't. I can't wait to keep watching it. You're so excited. I am. I am so <laughs> on board with this. Like you bought. I, he bought the season, guys. I did. I he bought, bought the season on iTunes. Bought the season on iTunes. Can't wait to find out what Andy Greenwald thinks about it. Oh no, God no! He's gonna love it. Why'd you bring this? I can up? already tell you. You think he's gonna love it? Oh, 100 percent. I think he's gonna talk about how recycled it is. No, nope. I think 100 percent he's going to enjoy it. Well, regardless, I don't think I give a shit what that guy thinks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, look, let's uh, let's take a break. I've got iced coffee running through my uh, veins and my bladder. You got anything else you want to say before we get into what are we get into? A little music, a little music talk. All right, we'll be right back. There is a ton of content over on the Sight and Sound YouTube page. Obviously, you can listen to us talk via podcast form, but We've got you covered with a ton of other content as well. I'm doing album reviews and music discussion. Ryan is doing movie stuff. We're doing TV stuff. We're doing vlogs. A bunch of shenanigans over on the Sight and Sound YouTube page. All you got to do is go to YouTube, search for Sight and Sound, subscribe to our channel, or you can click in the link in the description box of this podcast and subscribe to us. It's good times. Watch our faces. Listen to stuff. YouTube is the place to be. You had something you wanted to say? You gonna say it? I think we should. Well, we don't have to do it right now. But one thing that's really interesting to me, we talk a lot about like what it's like to be a casual fan versus a hot, diehard fan. Yeah. And usually, what I think separates the two is like just how much you care. Right. Like if I'm a diehard movie fan, I care more about movies. I'm watching things on YouTube in the movie space or whatever. Yes. And a casual fan doesn't care as much. They just want to go to a movie and have a good time or get scared, whatever. Something that's really interesting to me, it's like specifically with movies, it's like we have this perception or interpretation of how we feel with sh how shitty Adam Sandler movies are. Yet, right. they're the most popular things on Netflix. So it's like, it doesn't necessarily always matter how much the diehard fans care about something. Yes, I mean, we can get an actor to, uh, you know, via campaign on the internet to uh, play a superhero or what have you or whatever. But the casual fans primarily determine some of this shit. 100%. Th that's, that's why it's so important to me, especially when we started uh, Sight and Sound Up. And we talk about it a lot. We've talked about it ever since we've started it, how important it is to consider casual fans. Yeah. And at least consider the perception of everyday people because the diehard fans, the people who are super, super in uh, inside baseball, so to speak, I feel like they think that whatever uh, the tone of something is or the tone of the conversation is what the conversation is, is centered around it. But that's not always what it is. Right. The reason why I bring this up is because the, I think it was like two weeks ago when we talked about Tidal uh, for the first time, or it was during Jay-Z's album preview that right. we had on the podcast. Since then... Review up now. Since then, on my Twitter, I th 
there's one specific uh, person that I'm friends with. I don't think he listens to this show, but he was very much anticipating this album. I've heard other people anticipate it and talk about it. Other than our conversation, I haven't really heard any negative connotation or negative uh, reactions to title. Right. So this specific well, not uh, many people have it. So. This specific person I'm friends with is all about title, and he was retweeting a bunch of people that were on the title bandwagon. They were talking about right. how great Jay Z's album was. Title, 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 title. Complete opposite uh, opinion from what we both share. And so I'm just kind of fascinated um, by this topic in general because it's just going back to what I said initially. It's like it doesn't even matter that even though yeah. we're, we're – well, you are diehard into music and I'm somewhat on the outside of it. But title still kind of wins and it's doing its own thing. And I, I don't like to see something like title exist. Um, but I do want to talk about something that you teased in the Facebook Live. We'll, we can talk about it at the end. Uh, but how many st- – I was thinking about why I dislike Tidal so much and how I'm only about Spotify. One music service, yet I subscribe One to – One range to rule them all. Except I subscribe to so many TV streaming services. Right. So I did want to have that conversation. We don't have to do it right now. But – I've just been thinking a lot about this all because of everything that's been going on with Tidal recently. Well, yeah, I mean, so uh, the music community, uh, the music, the critical community, for the most part, I would say, are pretty indifferent on it all. I mean, everybody's got their own preferred music service, I guess. It just so happens that Spotify not only came along uh, they didn't even necessarily come along first. Like services like RDO existed, and yeah, but but Spotify perfected it. Okay, that, yeah. Like this was sort of the conversation we had when Hulu announced that they were going to be doing Hulu TV, uh, like their their subscription uh, live TV service, and then YouTube jumped on the bandwagon. And Sling had already existed for a long time, and one of the reasons why I wanted to leave Sling, even though I do enjoy it, is because. YouTube and Hulu are just they're bigger platforms. They have they have bigger servers. I'm sure the quality is going to get better in general and they're always going to trump a smaller uh, a smaller company like that. The issue the issue with with music, I think, is because it is as I've said before in the past, it is such a disposable entertainment platform. You know, yes. there's so much of it. There's I mean, and obviously there's so much TV and whatnot too, but it's easy. And I've talked about this on my music show, but it's easy to hear 30, 15, 10 seconds of a song and decide almost instantly if you enjoy it or not. Uh, TV shows. And I'm not just talking about with time TV shows and movies are greater investments money wise. And I think that's why for the most part, at least from my perception, uh, most people don't have a problem spending the money for those extra platforms. So whether they already have Netflix, they're dishing out, hey, well, let me get this Hulu. Let me get Amazon Prime. Um, I think that's that's what it is. There's more bang for your buck. Whereas for music, there's so little return. Like, again, you said right. it's disposable, but it just it's so easy to consume and it's so quick to consume music that it doesn't feel like it should cost money. And we've had similar conversations. The other thing about music, too, is that there's far less exclusives when it comes to music. And that's why, like, if you want to watch The Office, you have to have Netflix. You can't really watch The Office anywhere else streaming-wise. So you're like, well, I want to have the Netflix so I can watch The Office. I'm going to have Hulu so I can watch Shark Tank. And so things are just spread out more in the TV landscape, and they're willing to spend more money to get to acquire those apps. And I think that's one of the biggest differences. So, but anyway, I just kind of think it's funny that even though they're similar, they're very different and that I'm totally against having more than one music platform, but I'm all about having five TV platforms. I'm glad that you brought that, uh, that whole conversation up with, with movie and TV services compared to the music services, because I, I do think it is an interesting point. I think it's a fascinating thing to sort of explore 
the 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 issues with title as well and because I don't want it to look I don't have these same issues with with Apple Music. I just don't. I mean, I have my own issues with Apple Music and music exclusivity is an issue. I've talked about that a lot. But part of the one of the biggest issues with Apple or I'm sorry, with uh title was just how it was presented. The fact that uh when when the service was announced, <laughs> it was so title exists because I believe I can't I don't remember who who they bought. I think Jay-Z bought some music streaming company and and renamed it. But regardless, the way it was presented was he got all these huge A-list musicians together on a on a stage to announce it and they signed this almost like a almost like a fucking declaration of independence sort of thing <laughs> for music. And it was just presented as this streaming service service for musicians because the, uh, you know, the, the whole dialogue around streaming services was royalty rates. And, and that's a whole other conversation. But then when people actually dug into it, they weren't really offering anything any different. And they had cut these deals with these A-list artists to sort of be on the platform and maybe they were paying them more money, maybe they weren't. But when it came to the everyday musician, maybe the mid-level and some of the you know newer and up-and-coming up musicians, the deals were the exact same. The royalty rates were basically, I mean, minuscule uh, different like differences between the rates that they were actually getting. Right. And... Not to mention, too, that they just they weren't offering anything new. If you're going to bring a competing service to into the race, you need to come with features that are going to set you apart from other people. Otherwise, all you are offering is confusion in the marketplace. Give me a reason to jump ship from one service to another. Uh, and they just didn't do that. And I just thought they were really off base with doing that whole thing. The, the service title was launched on the back of Kanye West. When The Life of Pablo came out, it was right around the time that Tidal launched, and they launched with this three, I think it was a three-month free trial, and people, not only were they, not only did they, uh, not only did Kanye West put his album, The Life of Pablo, out exclusively on Tidal uh, for a, a limited amount of time, but he was also streaming other events. His Madison Square Garden listening party. Are you familiar with this? Do you know yes. about this? Okay, yeah. so for those that don't know, uh, before he released the album, Kanye West held a listening party at Madison Square Garden, which is nuts. I mean, nobody even knew what was really going to happen, but it was a fashion show. And then he walks out with his computer and he plugs it in the aux cord <laughs> into his computer and just hits play on his album. And it was one of the most bizarre things that I've ever seen in my life, but it was also incredibly captivating. When when the event did you watch it at all? No. When the event was over, he just started like people he had this whole crew around him like Lamar Odom was there <laughs> uh Frank Ocean was there and people hadn't seen Frank Ocean for years like just all these fucking people Kid Cudi just hanging out around him while he was like dancing and grooving to his own music once it ended he was just passing the ox cord around and people were like plugging their oh I want to play my new song <laughs> it ended up just turning into like a party yeah it was the most bizarre thing ever but uh, he streamed some other fashion shows on there. And, yeah, it, it was just this whole thing. And then once his uh, once his album became available on other services, a bunch of people jumped ship. A bunch of people went to, you know, they went back to Spotify. They went to Apple Music, wherever they were. So the news came out this past week that Kanye West was no longer going to be a part of Tidal. He was going to... Essentially, I don't know what deal he signed. I don't know what deal exists that's out there. But he basically said what everybody else was thinking as a consumer. He didn't like the fact that people couldn't listen to his album when it came out. And he didn't want it to happen again. What do you think of, first of all, what do you think of an artist this big making this statement? And two, what do you think of Kanye West in general making this statement? It's kind of the... Uh fuck you that I wanted. Absolutely. And it, it, I'm not like, I'm probably more of a Jay-Z fan than I am a Kanye fan, right. but 
Just pure music wise. Yeah. Yeah. But based on <laughs> what these two represent right now in this scenario, uh, I'm uh, much higher on Kanye. Oh yeah. And uh, the movie. There's, there's a little bit of punk rock about I Kanye. Th- I think. It, I mean, it's a huge middle finger. Right. To to all of it. Not yeah. like not just about him, but to the, the whole idea of title. Uh, and I was and fascinated. exclusivity in general. I mean, that was his statement. I want as many people to listen to my music as possible. Another thing too, and people, might, I don't think people give Kanye credit. I, I'm probably guilty of this too, but you understand how much, how business minded Kanye is, oh, and to see huge. someone make this kind of decision, it's just kind of, um, it's it's, it's extremely special and interesting. The day before his album came out, he went on Twitter and said uh, that Bill Cosby was innocent and just left it at that. <laughs> didn't didn't explain, didn't go into it just just so people would pay attention to him. Yes, it's amazing. Um <laughs> so yeah, this story was uh it was awesome. It was awesome. I like it a lot. It's and a, so It's a big deal. It is. And and even since then there's more about title that's come out like even since Kanye dropped Jay Z released his album everywhere but Spotify. Right. So that's another interesting thing um, that kind of further solidifies how shitty Jay Z is being about that the whole thing. That surprised me. That surprised me that, like, if he would have released, if he would have released it everywhere except for Apple Music, that would have been less surprising. But the fact that he did it with everywhere Spotify, but Spotify, yeah, is yeah. is surprising. It just that sounds like an emotional business decision to me because I feel like it's easy to brand Spotify as the the one who changed everything even though Apple Music Apple Music is essentially the exact same as yeah, Spotify it, it, in every way well with the ex- it, like, they actually have more features than Spotify they have they have a live radio show they do they do these crazy video uh like I don't know how you would describe it. They're not music videos. They're almost short films. Senator, like Sampha put out a short yeah. film. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's easy for me to kind of like I just imagine Apple Music being the iOS version of this, and Spotify right. being like that's how I consider it. Like it's a, sort of a matter of the platform, um, which I can. I mean, I understand that at least, even right. though I might be parcels to one or the other. I at least understand it. But to ha- have it on everything but Spotify, it's just. It's silly. It's kind of funny. Especially when you would benefit if it was on Spotify. That's all that yeah. would happen. If you're already going to make the jump to have it everywhere else but the platform that you own, it's also the. It I'm, makes no sense. It has to be emotional. I mean, here's my opinion of it, and this is just a take, but it's kind of funny. So you've got Apple, who is one of the biggest companies in the entire world. You have Jay Z, one of the biggest musicians in the entire world, especially financially. He's a billionaire. Yeah. And then you have this other company that's just essentially a tech startup company that came to prominence and fruition. They're kind of the odd person out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. This is purely, I, I mean, I'm, this is like a conspiracy theory. Apple could have totally paid him to not put it on there. That's another thing in exclusivity. You could also. True. You could also convince somebody to try to filter out your competition. Now that's a stupid thing. It's going to take way more than <laughs> than Jay Z to shut yeah. down Spotify. But right. it's uh it, it's it's a big move. It's a big move for Kanye to to take this stance because no matter no matter what you think about music today, I can almost guarantee you this: the people who do sit at the top, the I mean, A list people, Kanye West, Jay Z, Taylor Swift, Drake. I mean huge huge artists there is n- without a doubt everything that they do in terms of their business decisions has to be carefully carefully calculated because music is so volatile it is so fragile that it can be here today gone tomorrow it's not like with movies you know movies right. they you sign a deal with TNT and your movie gets played every single christmas for the next 30 years or whatever it is yeah uh, man, for for Kanye to go this rogue, and of course it's going to be somebody like him, is it, it does send shockwaves because no no one is safe, no one, and no one should be safe in music. Uh, to I've ranted on Taylor Swift before, but you know 
she's had her roundabouts with these music streaming services. But for somebody as big as Kanye West to say that no, ever taking the taking our side, taking the internet side, taking every single person that listens to music as a consumer side and saying right. my music should be available to anyone. I make money touring i make money through my fashion line i make money through shoes start your own fucking shoe line go do that shit i just want people to take in my music right i i'm fascinated going back to the sort of the people that i was examining on twitter that were sort of in defense right. of title title fanboys i'm just kind of shocked in these particular cases when people will take the side of the rich and powerful versus the people and i'm not saying that in a way to like i'm not taking away anything that jay-z has accomplished right because what he has done he is jay-z for a reason i'm not taking any i'm talking about the things that seem vile the things that seem emotional like some again going back to he's not really this might be the one thing that doesn't impress me about jay-z do you know about his the, title do you know about so, the sprint deal yeah. We can talk about that in a second. Yeah. yeah. But uh I guess all I'm saying is like I had a I had a back and forth with someone on Twitter. Like I don't get to listen to it. And I right. mean I, I can subscribe to Title too, but if Jay Z had put it on Spotify, then the Ryan Snelling listener could also consume his album. Have you um, ever heard Lemonade? Beyonce's Lemonade? We watched together oh, at yeah, your house right. and you've forgotten that fact so many times. <laughs> but I guess my my point is that I'm shocked whenever that, that there are people that are out there that exist that like defend Jay-Z, Jay-Z's decisions to do this type of thing when right. it should be about, like you said, siding with the internet, siding with the consumer. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand it. You would think that um, everyone would be on quote unquote our side. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, man. It's, I, I'm, I'm just so passionate about it because you- I, I want, I, music in general can't move forward unless the business around it moves forward. How many people do you think only subscribe to Title? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's some diehard. Well, it's it's hard, right? But I, I can't remember. Yes, it is. So Beyonce's uh, Lemonade, you can actually buy a physical version of it. Um, but I'm sure there are some diehard, diehard uh you know, Beyonce fans that want to just stream Lemonade. Only subscribe to Tidal. I'm sure not there's subs- probably a lot. Not subscribe to Tidal for Lemonade. Only Tidal, no Apple Music. Just in Spotify. general. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'd i say it's, I'd say there's a lot of people, but I, I'd say it's very, very significant compared to Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah. Probably should have done some research, but that's okay. I didn't, I didn't expect you to know. It was more of a, Let's talk about what else this means, though, real quick, uh, while we're sort of getting into it. Kanye West no longer being tied down to title. Well, they're battling it out in court. We don't know. There's also some... He's quote-unquote owed millions of dollars. Yeah, there's also some beef. uh, There's a riff between... Rift? Not a riff. Not a guitar riff, but a rift between... Is that right? Rift? Is it a rift? I would would have said riff. Okay. They're... Tiff. A tiff, yeah. Their relationship has broken down. It has deteriorated. And uh, Jay-Z and Kanye West, not not uh, in the best relationship. But nonetheless, what does this mean for Kanye West? It means that he can be free and open to really do whatever he wants. Not that he wasn't before, but I think the thing that most people are going to be talking about is uh, a Drake and Kanye collaboration. People have been wanting for the new Watch the Throne. And Kanye West and Drake, in terms of pop culture in general, have been on the throne for a very, very long time. I think it'd be everything. You don't even like that song. <laughs> Why did you just quote that song? You still don't like you still don't like Life of Pablo. I don't need to. This this collaboration album has been teased for a very, very long time. Um, and Kanye's spoken about it on stage. He said, uh, you know, talked about how there are quote unquote politics keeping him from working with other people. Like he can't have the people who he wants on his albums because of shit going on in the background. He just wants to put out his music. And uh, this lets him do that. Drake has a deal of some sort with Apple 
And they've even, did you know that they've even put up teaser billboards about this collaboration before? No. Yeah, they've put them up in California before. Interesting. Yeah, it's something about Calabasas because they both live in Calabasas with Brian Callen. Anyways, so they put up these billboards and every time they go up, people are like, oh shit. Apparently they have like over 30 songs they've already done together. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The first collaboration they've ever done on an actual album was the song Glow on uh, More Life. But fuck taking off work for a what Drake What about album. Forever? That was on the LeBron James documentary movie. That wasn't. That's a great song. It's a really good song. I don't give a fuck. You know how I take off work for Drake albums? Yeah. What do you think I'm going to do for the collaboration album between Kanye West and Drake? Quit your job. I might take off life. <laughs> I, might just, I might just ascend to the heavens. I don't know. Right. Where do you want to go from here? How do we're ending? We're ending segments weird today. Is that is that all you have? That's all I have. I mean, the last thing I guess I just want to say is uh, I, I am fascinated by that discussion that you had between being an annoyed with multiple music streaming services and having an abundance of of video ones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Can we get like a sight and sound movies where you talk about it or something? Uh, it's a really, it's mainly, there are no movie streaming services really. I mean, yeah. there's like, there's some, but they never really take off. It's always the, the mixture of the TV and the film. Like Voodoo isn't a, I guess I'm mainly talking about the subscription services. Do you like, think of course, there's, you know, the iTunes movie library. Of course, there's Voodoo. But I was mainly talking about why people subscribe to Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, um, and HBO oh, for I, the television. I was going to tell you. We'll end on this. I was going to tell you about the Sprint deal. You you know about it, I guess. But uh, Jay-Z cut this deal with Sprint to where, and he did the same thing with Samsung for Magna Carta Holy Grail. But... It was going to be a release that was exclusive to ti Monty existing, Python, holy crap. existing title uh, subscribers, but also people who were on Sprint. And did you know that his album is already certified platinum? No. Do you know how he did this? No. When Sprint paid him, oh. they paid the album. Yeah. And essentially it, it registered as album sales. So right. he bought a platinum certification. Yeah. How shitty is that? That's dumb. That's like that's like us starting an MMA league, but not hiring any fighters, but just crowning ourselves the champion. <laughs> Having never fought a fight. Well, the league exists. Actually, now I kind of like this idea. Oh, you do? Yeah. You want to be I'd, the? I'd be world heavyweight champion. Yeah. You want to be tag team maybe, champions without a partner? Maybe I'd be more welterweight, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. How much do you weigh? One seventy ish. Yeah, you'd be a you'd be a welterweight. Really? Yeah. I knew something. You'd have to fight GSP. I would die. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Wrap it up with movies. It is hot outside. It's summertime. You're going to the beach. You're going to the lake. You're going on hikes. Whatever you're doing. Maybe it's too hot to go outside. I have no idea. But I'll tell you what. It's so hot that you've got those nasty, gross pit stains and all those old T-shirts so we've got you covered. Go to sightsoundpod.com, pick up your sight and sound gear. We've got a summer line coming out with some incredible designs. I am biased because I designed them, but that's okay. They do look good, I promise you. There's a lot of great stuff over there. We're always releasing new t-shirts. We have a new limited design that will only be available for the month of July, and we've got a new limited design coming every single month. But go to sightsoundpod.com and pick up your t-shirts. You're going to feel good about yourself because not only are you supporting the podcast, not only are you doing your part to help make the podcast better, you're going to look fantastic while supporting the show. Sightsoundpod.com. Pick up your t-shirts today. I've been waiting to talk about Spider-Man with you. Ever since I saw it on opening night before you saw it. You're proud of yourself, aren't you? I am. I, I had think a, you care more about this, this than anyone on earth. I had a bad movie experience, movie theater experience. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the main event. We're both 
going to get to talk about Spider-Man Homecoming. I think both of us are anticipating this conversation very much. Just so that everyone knows, it will be filled with spoilers. That's right. So if you haven't seen the movie, do not continue this podcast. Okay. Go on. I had a bad theater experience. And oh, it, and no. It, and it kind of ruined... Uh, kind of ruined a little bit of the movie for oh, me honestly no. so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest and transparent i i don't go out to the movie theaters that often very selective about it um there was a guy who was at our theater i saw it at 11 o'clock and some guy like barged into the our theater and started screaming and then left and then did it again and was like he was like fuck this movie fuck this movie dude i was like a little scared during the movie during the movie the like probably the first 10 minutes of the film yeah like so it's probably someone who had just recently seen it i, I don't i have no idea but it it like i was like it completely took me out of like a, a very small tiny portion of the beginning of the film that sucks. I know, right? Fuck that guy. I know. Yeah, fuck that guy. He did it twice? Twice. In the span of 10 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's really bullshit. shitty. It, I've it also very never heard of anything like that happening. Right? Wow. It, what yeah. a strange. Pissed me off. Wow, that sucks. Nonetheless, also had some straight up trash trailers going into this movie. I don't even. I didn't, I didn't see any of the trailers. Valerian. Apparently, Valerian's great. I'm. I don't need it to be. I don't care about that movie at all. I, I mean, if it's great, then fine. But I'm not speaking towards the movie. But the trailers aren't that great. N- no one knows what's happening. Nothing at all that I can think of makes me want to see that movie. If it there's does, nothing that makes me want to. see If it that movie. does get just like great reviews all the way around, are you going to go see it? No. Really? I'm not going to go see it. No. Really? I'll watch it when it comes out. If it gets... On VOD or whatever. If it gets glowing reviews, I'll probably go see it. No. I'm not. All right. Well, you just have a bad taste in your mouth because it kind of looks like Jupiter or something. That movie's awful. <laughs> if you knew how bad of an experience that was, you would think the same thing, too. Such a shitty movie. What else? What were the other trailers that played before this? That also, Luke Basson. I know that he's yeah. respected, but the very first movie. When was the last that time you saw The Fifth Element? I've never seen it. Can we see? Can we watch? I no, wanna, you need to focus on the movies that you need to see. I want to do it ever before seeing before for Fifth I element. see Fifth Are Element. You fucking kidding me right now? Before I see the Fifth Element, why don't you just watch half the fucking MCU movies that exist? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I have. I've seen most of them except for the Thor, Thor movies. Um. I don't know. Luke Basson, he's just fine. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Luke Basson, but... I don't know anything no, else he's people, done people, besides Fifth Element. People forgot, I mean, how divisive Lucy was. I mean, when people hate that movie, they hate that movie. Spicy Lucy? Um, yeah. Um, Three Days to Kill, that movie blows ass. That was the very first movie I ever reviewed for a podcast. Very first episode of Film Beef. Three Days to Kill is trash. There's just... <laughs> Luke, Luke Basson is nothing to me. So I know a lot of people like him and they're excited, but I just there's there's nothing going on there. So um I was talking about Spider Man. Yeah. I'm gonna start this off by doing something that I don't do that often, but I need to do it to give context to the rest of this discussion. I gave this movie a B. How do you feel about that? I've rated it higher, but continue. Okay. I had a great time in this movie. This is a really, really good movie. Uh, Tom Holland is Spider Man. Yes, I, uh, I, I, I've, I've never felt like Tobey Maguire for me personally was Peter Parker or the Spider Man that I wanted and that I was looking for. The my biggest problem with the same Raimi Spider Man movies are the casting. All around, right? With the exception of J. Jonah Jameson, and yeah. J.K. Simmons, I don't think any of those actors personify any of those characters. This this movie, except j- maybe Amy. This movie, just by getting that right, was already a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, 
I also, even when I saw the first Spider-Man as, as a younger individual, I walked out of that movie just thinking, this was just kind of just okay. The second, the second Spider-Man movie, I think it's just a good movie. It could have been, it could have been anything. I just thought it was a, a good movie. Uh, the third one was garbage <laughs> and um, I never, and it's it, all of that together. The fact that Tobey Maguire never felt like Spider-Man to me, the fact that I was just kind of lukewarm on the first one and the second one, you know, was good. But, and the third one was trash. I just didn't, I didn't want to see amazing Spider-Man. I never, I just had a bad Which is taste interesting on because I feel like oh, that might sway you the opposite way. Like, I think if you weren't excited about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, you would be excited about it. I was a big reboot. fan of Mark Webb, obviously. Huge fan of Mark Webb. And um, I was excited about a lot of that movie going into it. And for whatever, I think it might have just been at the time I wasn't going and seeing a lot of films. Yeah. Um, and then by the time that I think I was interested in again, the second one came out and everybody said how terrible it was. Um, but nonetheless, this movie... For me, the casting cho- choices were fantastic. Tom Holland, I think, knocked it out of the park. Michael fucking Keaton was great in this movie. Yeah. Incredible. It For was. Everything, everything that anybody has ever said negative about uh, Marvel villains, they're justified in it. They've been paper thin, to say the least, with the exception of Loki. But he he was great in this movie. They gave you a reason to care. It, and it was also clever the way that they constructed damage control and all that. Yeah, his his political uh, views on everything. Absolutely, the car scene between he and Tom Holland was great. Got a little bit of some Beetlejuice in that. <laughs> Did you get a Beetlejuice vibe when you- I haven't seen Beetlejuice in years? I don't know. What multiplicity? No. Okay. I'm I wasn't. Big Michael Keaton I wasn't fan. raised on Michael Keaton like you are. <laughs> big Michael. Have Keaton you seen fan. Life? When he finds out he gets cancer and he makes I the videos for his kids. There you go. I need to see it. Cha-ching! I win. No. Um, have you ever seen Batman? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I watched it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. It's the only bit of personality that Michael Keaton has for as Bruce Wayne in that. Right. Um, anyway, um, Alfred. The, the, the thing the about soup is cold. The it's thing about sauce, Tom Holland. I was huge into Andrew Garfield's Spider Man. Oh yeah, you like that? I I I loved his suit in Amazing Spider Man too. I thought it was I I was a big fan of him as Spider Man. People can talk about how he's too good looking. That's fine. I accept that, but I don't care because I, I like that he was a little bit wiry. He was he looked younger. He's not that much younger, but he looked younger than Tobey Maguire. I mean, Tobey Maguire, he's just. When you look at him, he just kind of looks lame. It's the last He's version a, of a superhero I would ever think of in my yeah, life. Yeah, can you? Would you want Tobey Maguire to play anyone ever? Even, <laughs> even, even, even. <laughs> no, I don't. That is my defense. That no. is my defense. When people are like, "Oh, Tobey Maguire, Spider Man's the best Spider Man." When have you ever once said, "I want Tobey Maguire to can be I, this role"? Can, no one has ever ever said it. Let me wrap up my. My thoughts on Tobey Maguire here. The best movie, the best performance I think he's ever given, period, was Brothers. Yeah. He was he's really good. great in that movie. Yeah. It took me a solid three days to come to terms with that. Like, <laughs> I, I, when I, that movie was over, I refused to let myself think that he yeah. was good in that movie. And eventually, I finally almost had to have like a sit down. Like, I yeah. think I, Locked myself in a room and I said, "Toby McGuire was really good in that movie." Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not being facetious. There was a few years ago when uh, he played that guy uh, that was famous for the chess or whatever it was, whatever that movie was. Bobby that Fisher. Came out of, yeah, Bobby. Yeah. He played Bobby Fisher, and it was some movie about chess. And I went, "Yeah, that sounds about right." right. <laughs> yeah. A, a boring idea for a boring movie by a boring, boring actor. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That was a really good movie. Okay, I'm not going to watch it. You're never going to convince me to watch that movie. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's that was a funny conversation. Andrew Garfield, to me, just made more sense. And Civil War, um, I was disappointed that he wasn't going to be in the MCU. But um, I liked the Civil War interpretation. But I was already hesitating. Like, I don't want Spider-Man to just always think everything is awesome. You know what I mean? Right. 
like the way that people are annoyed by Andrew Garfield's stuttering uh, as Peter Parker, I think I was going to be annoyed if it was just like, oh, this is awesome. Because he says it like even like three times in the airport scene in Civil right. War. So um, it would have been. as a kid. I know, I know, but yeah. it would have been a little over the top of you if that was just like what he said during every scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's something I wasn't anticipating. Um, that's not. I didn't have that problem mm-hmm. with Spider-Man Homecoming. He, like you said, I agree 100%. He is Peter Parker, and he is Spider-Man. Right. I mean, he did it an incredible job. Um, the strongest aspect and the the what carries this entire movie is its tone and identity. Yes. His Marty McFly approach to this coming-of-age movie. It was so coming-of-age, and I don't know, I haven't really watched a whole lot of reviews or anything like that on this. I've seen a lot. I loved the idea of the vulture being Liz's dad. Yeah, that was a great thing. Because, hey, hey, guess who saw that coming? Kayla. Of course. That's bullshit. She goes, I knew. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. I would hate She's to be really her. She's really good at that. Though. I would hate to be her. No, she That's has a good a, time about it. I hate that. She has fun with it. I don't think it's fun. She, I think she it's does. the exact opposite of fun. We've like started movies, and before it's even gotten going, she's literally said the entire plot. Before. I hate that so much. But anyway, <laughs> remove, if you want to call Spider-Man the John Hughes movie of the MCU, remove the superhero element. Who, in a coming-of-age high school movie... Who is perfect for uh who's the perfect villain for a high school boys as a main character? His love interest dad. Of course. Makes a ton of sense. And that reveal was a lot of fun. It just again, even though it's about the super it's a superhero movie, it just nailed that landing. Right. Just makes so much no pun sense. Intended. Yeah. And uh landing. I was like, nailed? Why did that's as a bird. Yeah. Anyway, um, the design of the vulture was great. Yeah. I loved to, I actually loved to being able to kind of see his costume. Didn't really get a whole lot of it in the trailers, at least. I also, I like the incorporation of the Chitari. Uh, yeah. Weaponry. Which, and- which is something that they kind of introduced in when they were doing Marvel one shots. There was a short film. I can't, it's, I don't remember what it's called. It's called like item 47. Kevin Marks will correct me immediately, but it's a short film about uh, a couple of civilians that pick up one of the Chitari's weapons. Right. So, and that was several years ago. So I'm kind of surprised that they, uh, they, you know, well, built I, off of that. I it thought was it was pretty cool. Kind of a interesting, don't, don't roll your eyes when I say this, but it was kind of an interesting, like Christopher Nolan approach to explaining explaining uh, fantastical events on a more grounded level. Like we haven't really seen, maybe the exception of Ant Man, we haven't really seen a lot of Marvel m- movies be this grounded. Like, I mean, unless you're talking about the Netflix series, we haven't seen them be this right. small. And to sort of have them explain how an everyday individual can just have powers. By utilizing this technology with the shocker and and whatnot, I thought that was really cool too. And you, you were talking about it, but while we're just on positives, uh, the the John Hughes approach to this film, they talked about that leading up to the movie, how they were sort of looking at it from that perspective. And I, I was really excited about that. I thought they nailed it for sure. Also, one thing that I think people might have forgotten, but was brought up when Kevin Feige was sort of talking about how this movie was going to be approached or just, I guess, Spider-Man in the MCU. They actually util- or they brought up Harry Potter and how Harry Potter films, you follow Harry through each step in, in Hogwarts. And I thought that was a really good idea, too, as opposed to being like, Harry's in high school. Now Harry's in college. Right. Now Harry's an adult. Um, all of that stuff, I thought they did a really good job on. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I also really like the things that I think um, are easy for Spider-Man diehard fans to dismiss, like the fact that Ned knows that he's Spider-Man almost immediately. Um, I think people are raising questions about, like, why should Spider-Man have such a high-tech suit? Doesn't that kind of ruin uh, Spider-Man in general? Like, why does he, why does Park Peter Parker have to have powers at all if he can have a high-tech suit? But I actually, again, 
think it's fine. I think it totally works uh, for for several reasons. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people kind of discuss that. Um, I think the only the the two things that kind of made me go, ah, um, are where this movie's placed in the timeline. Um, I was surprised how they ref they go all the way back and they reference an event that happened in the first Avengers and they skip over things that happen in Age of Ultron. I mean, that kind of the first Avengers movie is always kind of highlighted. Like even when you watch the Netflix Marvel series, they always talk about the incident in New York. And I know that it takes place in New York, but they never like acknowledge like when the Hulk went crazy in South Africa uh, during Age of Ultron. Like they never re- slow, they never referenced Sokovia in anything but Civil War. So right. I thought that was kind of interesting that they still went with the the invasion of New York, but um. The timeline of where this makes sense, it says it took place eight years after that, which that throws, I don't understand where we are. And I'm just waiting for Kevin Feige to address that because it makes, it doesn't make any of the timeline make any sense at all. And that's such a glaring, it's such an obvious thing for them to decide to do. So I know that there's an answer. Hey, when did that happen again? Eight years? Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just write it. Yeah. Like it's, it's like such, the first thing. You it makes of. like, it's such a purposeful thing to have written in there, but there's right now we have no context, no explanation. So I need uh, Feige to address that because right now it doesn't match up because, I mean, he just left Germany, essentially. Um, it was a few months after Civil War that this took place. So don't understand that part. The other thing that I didn't really care for was the Mary Jane reveal. Okay. I don't at all have a problem. I mean, there were rumors a year ago that Zendaya was playing Mary Jane. I don't care if she's playing Mary Jane or not, but the fact that she is, and I'm not talking about Zendaya's ethnic background or racial background. I don't give a shit about any of that. Right. It's the fact that she just seemed to be a totally unique character who she was throughout the entire movie was not Mary Jane, but she was someone who we liked. Like the, the person that I got to know throughout that movie as Michelle I enjoyed that character. So I guess what I'm struggling with is why not just keep her that character, that great character, instead of making it a reveal? Well, it too. So while we're getting into issues that we had going on the two issues, talking about two things that you brought up, I'll start with the Mary Jane thing. One thing that I think is strange about that reveal, I actually don't have a problem with it at all. I don't really care, but I do think it is strange that they threw in so many, I mean, really inside baseball characters like Donald Glover's character being the prowler. Like that's, that's really inside baseball. Like miles Morales, uncle. Yeah. Kayla was like, that's supposed to be somebody that we know. And I was like, yeah. And then Matt Gargan as, it's as just a deep cut as a scorpion. Yeah. But then they're staying so true to those people, but yet they're like, Oh, we're going to change Mary Jane's name. It's still MJ, but it's a different. It's like, well, <laughs> like, it's like okay, why, yeah. why are we doing this, but not that? But I get it that they were trying to have like a clever reveal. Going back to the suit thing, while this the suit was never really an issue with me, I will say this: Spider Man without the suit became way more interesting to me, a hundred percent. And, and more that's part of why. That's part of why I dug it, but. I think it just makes so much sense for the story. Like, I homecoming consciously was not an origin story. So basically, right. their attitude is we don't give a shit. I mean, of course, all of these other movies exist, but we don't give a shit about retracing any of those steps. So I have had five Spider Man movies where he's had that suit. Now, the Spider Man I know is friends with the Avengers, is friends with Tony Stark makes a ton of sense that he gets upgraded to that suit, which is actually faithful to the comics. We just got there, quote-unquote, yeah. way earlier. Yeah. Like, um, you know, talking about the Iron Spider suit. But but but, it, but I think that it does have some... I think we, you have to bring it up because... Yeah. For instance, let's just say this. What if all of a sudden... We all love Spider-Man for what he is, a ground, you know, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, all this stuff. How would you feel if all of a sudden Batman had a suit where he could fly <laughs> with rockets and shoot lasers out of his hand and it was just a way more high? T- what if he turned into Iron Man? You would probably say, well, I- that's cool that he can do those things, but that's not really the Batman that I'm in love with. 
So I think it's I think I don't have those issues with Spider Man, but I see where people I, I see where you're coming from. I think I just liked how it was handled in the movie. So yeah. basically, it's building off of the this, they used it as a plot point. Yeah, it's a plot point. They um kind of involve the parentage of Tony Stark. Again, it's kind of something that they do in the comics. It's the literal um, reverse of Batman versus Superman. When he just had people killing people, you explain why it's different right, from right. what you know. Yeah, and then. Uh, but the other part of it is too that he receives it as a gift, yeah. and like when he's locked in the uh, in the damage control thing, he's using all of his powers and he's having fun with it. So there's a lot of like youthful moments, like oh, this is really right. cool. And then he gets the suit taken away from him. So like you said, it's not what he has the entire time. He still was kind of stripped down yeah. uh, for parts of it. So I just kind of found it to be an interesting uh, exploration of what was going on with the story and in the character. So it didn't really feel like. I, I think that everything else was so grounded. It was Tom Holland was so much of Peter Parker that it just felt natural to me. So yeah. it didn't really feel like a departure. It didn't really feel like that we moved away from what the character is actually all about because he was there underneath the whole time, and the movie was all so much focused on that already that this high-tech suit kind of felt like one of the smaller points. So I'm not getting that worked up about it. Here's, uh, here's the thing. We've talked a lot about positives, and... I still have that grade of it being a B and it's, you know, everything that we've said so far is sitting around a territory for me. At one point during the movie, I sat there and I thought to myself, I'm not enjoying this as much as I want to be. And I couldn't figure out why. And I left the theater purely by expectation, how much I had hyped it up for myself. I left the theater thinking something about this movie. I'm not as stoked. I'm not as fist pumpy as I want to be. And I thought about it for a long time. And here's what I've arrived at. My biggest issue with the movie is that I don't feel like we ever got Spider-Man a hundred percent in this film. And I get that he was a kid I get that he was still learning things, but for for example, every major action set piece that we got in this film, for the most part, was because Spider-Man screwed something up. In fact, we actually never really got, except with the exception of the shocker scene, which was super short, the, we never really got to see Spider-Man fight anybody. Uh, he fought... The vulture, he actually didn't even really defeat the vulture. The vulture <laughs> defeated himself. And I just, I felt... The I've, bank heist at the beginning was about it. Yeah, exactly. I, I never really, I walked out of the movie just feeling like we never really got a good uh, Sp Spider-Man scene where he was being awesome. Especially because in retrospect to Civil War, I always think about the scene when he caught uh, Winter Soldier's fist and when he did that in the movie, I literally vocally said, holy shit, because you forget that there's this kid who has this super strength and he's that strong to catch yeah. his hand like that. But I just never felt like we got that in this movie. Um, and I also I also just felt like we spent too much time. And this is nitpicky and that's fine, but that's just how I felt walking out of the movie. I also felt like we spent too much time with Peter Parker figuring out how to be Spider-Man. And I just, I just wanted more of him being a badass version of Spider Man. I wanted the Ray in uh, Force Awakens moment where, and people criticize it, but the moment where it kind of clicks for her and she's badass for at least a very small portion of the movie. And I just walked out of it being like, man, I kind of wish we got a little bit more of that. To address the first. Your first concern mm -hmm. about having sort of the those moments of him being awesome. Um, a part of the original trilogy that I used to just, I used to pop in this, that first Spider-Man, Sam Raimi Spider-Man, and just watch the scene, the final scene. Yeah. Where Green Goblin is just throwing him through those brick walls mm -hmm. in the dark uh, right before he eventually gets killed. That scene is really dark. It's really intense. It's just guys, you know, fighting it out. And I buy it. I even with Tobey Maguire, I still buy it. He, I mean, he's, you know, getting torn to pieces and yelling and all kind. Of, it's a really great scene. There was no 
there was nothing in the movie that was like that. Right. So there wasn't, like you said, I I guess how I would describe it is there was no really big moments mm-hmm. for Spider Man. Um, I just needed one. The, that there was, was you're right. Like there was a great uh scene where he's uh trapped in the rubble mm-hmm. and he saves himself. That's really good, but something a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, and I think people, I, and I kind of agree that the the final fight scene was actually one of the harder scenes to watch right. because you didn't exactly know what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, and it didn't result into a, um, a final fight really. Vulture kind of defeats himself. Yeah. Um, a lot of the action, like the really intense action is him. Like, for instance, the DC one, he's keeping an elevator from falling. Yeah. The boat one, he's keeping the boat together. <laughs> the, the plane one, he's keeping the plane from crashing. There's actually not many f- actual fight scenes that he... Right. And yeah. he, and all of them, he kind of gets his ass kicked for the most part, with the exception of the so- shocker scene. Yeah. So I, I can understand that, but I think there was just so much... The movie's got a lot right. I, mean, I just have... I, I was just having so much fun, and I just, again, it just within the context of the movie, I just kind of think it all made sense to me. Right. Like, I, I thought it was kind of seamless in that way. I do acknowledge that there weren't any of those, like, big kind of moments that I wish we had, but I think it all... I think it all kind of fit together pretty well. Yeah, it's not one of those things. And this is how... This is... I'm glad that I'm explaining this, because these are those takes when people, especially you, are like, I have no idea how you feel about something. Because I could... I could have walked out of that theater and just been like, I'm kind of disappointed. And then you would have been like, what the fuck? No, I, yeah. I, I like the movie. It's just, yeah. I, it, it didn't give me every single thing that I wanted. But I I mean, look, it's 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 great. It's really, really great. I I think it's, for me, it's tied for Spider-Man 2. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to only go up from here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm... It would be very hard for them to fuck it up, I think. Right. I have no idea. And this is a good thing. I have no idea where the hell the MCU is going. Like I don't either. Like, because they keep talking about, oh, this uh, you know, the infinity war or whatever, that that's gonna sort of close a chapter and Spider Man's gonna be our gateway into the next. What does that mean? You know what I I'll be honest, and this is me being a spoiled brat. <laughs> But because Spider Man is contracted to do five Marvel films, yeah, we've only we already have two out of the way. Is that confirmed? I thought it was five in addition to no. It's I thought it was in addition to Civil War. So I thought it was total six. No, okay. The the, the deal was five. So okay. that's essentially three Avengers films and two Spider Man movies. Right. I actually don't want that. I would rather take him out of one of. Like take them out of one of the Avengers movies yeah. and have a trilogy of Spider Man movies. I thought we were getting a trilogy of Spider Man movies. No, as of, as of right now, it's only five movies contract. I mean, they might add it. Right, they might add it in, but as of right now, it's it's Civil War, Homecoming, both Avengers movies, Homecoming too. So here's the fascinating thing about that: Feige has been so outspoken about how important Spider Man is to this whole thing. Does that mean? He's going to have a pretty large role to play in these Avengers films? I mean, I'm assuming so. No. He said the amount of screen time in the Avengers is the same as Civil War. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, never mind. Yeah. But, I mean, I but, don't know. But it also came out this past week that Homecoming 2 is the beginning of Phase 4. Right. For, for, so, I just think it's weird for the, the last, quote-unquote, Marvel Spider-Man movie that we know of to be the beginning of Phase 4. And it's like... Spider, I mean, this is. I think we're gonna look back here in like a year or two after Avengers. I don't think we realize how much of a passing of the baton Spider Man Homecoming is, right? For our DJ, I mean, he is this week a ton of quotes, a ton of reflective quotes have come out about him thinking back on. I mean, and even the end of the movie, it was like, uh, we've had this ring since 2008, talking right. about his relationship with Pepper Potts. I mean, it was very. I actually hated that at the end. I f- I, oh, really? I hated that. This was so... I don't think people realize how reflective this is right, right now. And I think it definitely leads to the demise of Iron Man and Infinity War. Um, I don't think we realize how much this movie passes the baton from Iron Man to Spider-Man. So it's disappointing to feel that now, but only get one Spider-Man movie in Phase 4? I think the next phase... Well, I think the next... I think the new dawn of uh, the MCU 
is built on the back of Spider-Man, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel. Well, yeah. That's- I mean, if you, I mean, a lot of the stuff that's going on in... And Ant-Man. And Ant-Man. Well, a lot of stuff that's going on in the Marvel comics right now... I mean, Captain Marvel is a huge player in that. Kevin Marks can be like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And you're right, but that's fine. I bought one issue of Civil War 2. <laughs> and she was very prominently featured. <laughs> that's all I'm basing this off of. Um, the next few weeks... So we're recording this on Sunday. Of course, it's released the Monday after the movie comes out. The next two weeks, I think are going to say a lot as to what the future holds because yep. so- Sony and Marvel might be taking a look at this like, wow, this is really successful. Let's do more. Comic-Con right. is in two weeks. I don't know. I th- In the next couple of weeks, we might be very telling as right. to what uh, the MCU holds uh, in the future. So I'm really excited by, by all of the possibilities. Um, I haven't stopped thinking about this movie since I saw it. Yeah. I, I am so excited to see it again. That's good. I can't stop thinking about it. I, uh, well, until I see War for the Planet of the Apes, then I'll probably stop thinking about it. But I just, here's the thing that I think is worth celebrating it is such a great time. Look, this whole, the funny thing about the, uh, the talk of, uh, superhero fatigue, the people that are talking about that are the, comic book fans who go and see the movies who are scared of it. Just shut the hell up about it. It's fine. It's, it, there's a lot of superhero movies, but right now it's great. With the exception of guardians of the galaxy two just being fine. DC got it right with wonder woman. Spider-Man just came out. And it's really, really good. We're on a high of Marvel stuff. Logan was great. Legion, even though it doesn't have as much to do with everything, we're just getting good shit. And that is exciting. The fact that we've been doing this shit for a while now and that it's just getting better is is exciting. It's a really, really exciting time. You know who you know who the heat meter, you know who I'm selling my stock on right now? Star Wars. They're uh excited, but my God, are they screwing the pooch with some of this stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean <laughs> they dropped out of Comic Con. We're we're saying that, but I'm I'm just the Last Jedi is going to destroy. Of course it is. But uh they just made the mistake of uh limiting themselves to one thing a year essentially. Yeah. Well they also they also decided to drop some really shitty news at a time when the comic not that they're competing but the comic book world is just like we're winning, we're winning. Okay. This is the weirdest episode of Weekly because I've never had this harder time ending segments before in my life. Battlefront should come out. Battlefront should have come out last month. You're talking about the game? Yeah. That would have softened the blow of all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But, I, I mean, we're there's going to be Star Wars fever this fall, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to get Battlefront, and then I'm going to watch the movie a week or a month later. But um, can, can I ask you a question about uh, Han Solo? You know how cool it would have been if they would have announced that James Gunn was doing the Han Solo movie to step in to finish it. That would have made a lot of sense. Right? It really would have. Just because the tone of uh, the Mario Brothers or whatever their names are. What are their names? Lord and Miller? Lord and Miller, sorry. They're not brothers. I was thinking of the the Captain America brothers. Russo? Russo brothers. Permanti brothers. The uh, So, the tone of... Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. Guys, let's go buy some shirts. Has anyone bought our new shirts? Yes. Oh, okay. What the hell's wrong with you? I just got a notification I, the other day. I haven't seen any pictures. They're getting shipped. Sightsoundpod.com. Get your summer shirts. It's hot out there. Go get you a tank top. Or or if you're one of those people that wears hoodies in the summer, I admire you, but it's silly. You wear hoodies? Some people do. Some people wear hoodies I'm in the summer. talking about you. You said you admire people with hoodies. I've never seen you wear a hoodie. You've never seen me wear a hoodie? I've seen you wear a hooded jacket. Oh, okay. Zip-up hoodie. I'm not a big fan of the zip-up hoodies anymore. I like the pullovers. SightSoundPod.com. Get your shirts. You can also find us at SightSoundPod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash SightSoundPod. Join the Sight and Sound Facebook group. There Link will- is in the description. That's right. He said it. You can find me at J Williams, J the A to the Y to the E on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. Do my music show every single Friday. Next week... Christina 
She laid down the gauntlet. She said, what the hell is power violence? What is that music genre? It's something you made up. And uh, so next week we're going to be talking about weird subgenres of music. My thoughts on them. Great. Yeah, where I, can they find you? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WhatUpSnail. And I'm going to make a special announcement. The past few weeks I've been teasing uh, the movie Bucket List episodes. And originally I was going to... I was planning on doing six and then releasing them. And I haven't found anyone else to do them yet. And because I've recorded a couple of those like forever ago, I'm just going to release them. I have three in the bank right now. I'm just going to release them. And if you all enjoy them, um, well, then I'll just make more. You're going to put them out on title, right? Yeah. I'm going to put them out specifically and exclusively on title <laughs> uh, for you guys. And yeah, and I guess... It's sort of like um, it's um, a compromise. Like I wanted it to be out in sections, but at the same time, if they're out and released and you all like them and other collider personalities hear them, then they might be more inclined to join me for future episodes. So I think it, it all makes sense. So it's going to kind of be a uh, mix of both worlds, if you will. So or both ideals, really. So, yeah, that's coming. I'll probably do that in the next week or so. I'll release the first episode. And it'll be the one with uh, myself and Chris Hartwell will be the first episode. My um, music project, Separator, our stuff is on Spotify right now. You can search for it and listen to it. That's, it's actually wherever you stream music. It's even on Tidal. You can stream it in any music service. Uh, go check <laughs> it out. We're putting out our album this month. Not 100% sure when, just kind of whenever we feel like it. It's called Existence. And... Uh, I think Carl and I were going to do a little after party just talking about making the album. And I don't know. Do you want to be a part of that? Do you want to host it? Yeah, I could host it. Okay. If you want to. It's up Have to they you. released their podcast yet? No, they're doing uh, test runs right oh, now. Oh, okay. All right. You got anything else? Nope. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.